Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join us for this webinar. My name is Josh Thrasher. I work with DWD Technology Group, and we are a Sage 100 partner located in Indiana. We provide Sage 100 support services to companies throughout the Midwest, and we're always trying to find new ways for our Sage 100 users to become more efficient and get more out of their software. Today, we have Matt from B Technologies, and he's going to be showing us their integrated solution, uh, Starship that can streamline your entire shipping workflow. Um, if you have any connection issues, this is just an aside, if you have connection issues, you can email me at jthrasher at dwdtechgroup.com um, and I can try and help you out. I think it's just me and Matt and Megan on the line from also some, from B Technology. So with that, Matt, I'm gonna make you the presenter and we're gonna see Starship. Okay, perfect, thanks Josh. Go. Let me share the right screen. Okay, so hopefully everyone can uh, see my screen. Um, as Josh mentioned, my name is Matt St. John, one of the sales executives here at B Technologies. And I really appreciate everyone taking time out of their day for our call. Uh, what we'll do is going to go through, kind of start with a quick slide deck, and then we'll jump into a live demo of Starship. But little agenda. I'll uh, we'll talk a little bit real quick about V Technologies as a company. Uh, talk about how V Technologies and Starship integrates with your small parcel and LTL carriers. Uh, discuss e-commerce integrations. Uh, talk a little bit about potential savings with USPS. And then, of course, jump right into that Starship Sage 100 demo. So again, real quick, a little bit about B Technologies. Uh, we've been developing integrated shipping solutions since 1989, so this year, 30 year anniversary. I've been working with the Sage product line for over 17 years now. So currently integrations with Sage 100, 300, and 500. And we have over 10,000 customers using our integrated shipping solutions. Uh, as you can see, we are a UPS ready as well as a FedEx compatible platinum solution. So uh, because we are basically certified vendor for both carriers, we do uh, qualify for their subsidy programs. And through those programs, you actually might be able to qualify for free funding that you can use to purchase Starship. And also a Sage Gold development partner as well as a Sage certified solution. So start out, we'll talk a little bit about the carriers and those carrier integrations that Starship has. So right up on this screen, it's just a snapshot of some of the carrier integrations. As you can see, both parcel as well as LTL. Currently, Starship has integrations with over two dozen carriers. Uh, we also have integrations with 3PL services. But with Starship and those carrier integrations, that's going to allow you to electronically rate shop either right from Starship or even in the demo I'll show you, we add a rate quote button inside of sales order entry in Sage 100. Um, but what we're doing is sending the carrier your account information and they're gonna return your live negotiated rate. So real-time rating, uh, for example, if tomorrow UPS ups a fuel surcharge, when you rate shop tomorrow, you automatically gain access to those new updated rates. Uh, we also uh, offer and allow you to pull in any of the other electronic information or options that the carriers offer. So, of course, the electronic uh, tracking numbers, pro numbers with a lot of the LTL carriers, electronic pickup, um, any of the documentation. So, a lot of the uh, LTL carriers you know, support a bill of lading, but Starship also can generate our own bill of lading form for you. Um, and then it, uh, contracts options. Uh, like one rate, uh, for example, like UPS, if anyone's doing international shipments, we fully support the paperless invoicing where they can uh, generate and deliver the international documents. But I'll show you in the demo that Starship can also generate those documents as well. Okay. And I'll jump into the e-commerce integration. So if anyone's doing integrations with any of these e-commerce uh, sites, uh, Starship does have integrations. Uh, we actually allow you to use the integrations two different ways. Uh, the direct integration is going to allow your shipper to actually write from inside Starship, and I'll use Amazon as an example, pull in Amazon orders, uh, do what we need to do, ship and process, receive our shipping documents. And with the direct interface, what Starship's going to do is just send tracking, freight amounts 
item quantities back directly to the e-commerce site. So again, with Amazon. Um, also with Amazon, we actually, if anyone's doing Fulfill by Amazon, uh, you'll actually be able to see those Amazon rates or Amazon carriers, as well as generate all the Amazon orders or documents. So you no longer have to go you know, onto Amazon, separate machine to get rates and to get those shipping documents. Um, the other way you can actually use our e-commerce integrations, uh, of course, a lot of clients, hey, we have an ERP system like Sage 100, so we're probably going to want to get those orders into Sage 100 first. Uh, if that's the case, which, and like I said, 99% of my customers it is, uh, what we'll do is normal procedure where we'll pull in the order from Sage into Starship. Again, inside Starship, do what we need to do, rate shop, ship and process, receive our shipping documents. And when we use an e-commerce as an extension, what Starship will do is write shipping information, again, tracking free item quantities back into Sage, but it will also write it back up to the e-commerce site. So kind of get two for one deal there. And a lot of our clients, that's, that's the way they use the e-commerce integrations. Okay. All right, and as I mentioned, we'll talk a little bit about USPS, uh, the potential savings. Uh, we're finding a lot of our clients are kind of monitoring uh, inside starship you can have it set up so it would actually give you an alert if usps will be a less expensive option for some of your shipments but just want you to think about some of the things that you're shipping um, you know it's not really some people say oh you know if it's too heavy i'm not going to qualify for cubic rate pricing through usps uh, but as you can see, it can be bowling balls, um, but we do have clients that doing the comparison, they're actually saving up to 65%. And really with cubic pricing, you know, nowadays UPS, FedEx, they do dim, dim dimensional weights. Um, USPS is actually doing that now as well. Uh, but the nice thing with this cubic pricing, anything that's going to fit in a large flat rate box, so less than 12 and a quarter by 12 and a quarter by six, uh, will qualify for cubic rating. And like I said, uh, really good rates. Our integration with USPS, the actual module is free. Um, just requires you to set up an account through a company called EasyPost. And through EasyPost, most of our clients do that because there is no monthly fee. And EasyPost is just like Indisha, just like Pitney Bowes. Really, they're just holding the metered mail, holding those funds. So as you process shipments, it just deducts from that metered mail account. Uh, but with EasyPost, there is no fees, um, no monthly fees. They also do not charge an upcharge if you want to refill your meter with a credit card. Um, and then through that integration, you'll also gain access to what's called customer priority pricing. So you're going to gain access to discounted rates automatically just by setting up that account. And uh, here's an example of some of the, you know, those USPS options. So kind of doing comparison between um, a flat rate envelope and then jumping into those cubic pricing. So again, anything under nine by 12, or I should say 12 by 12 by six, um, gonna qualify. And then there's also a cubic high volume column, as you can see there. So there are some qualifications that need or requirements that need to be met to qualify for that, but that's gonna give, give you access to even further discounted rates. And of course, one of the qualifications qualifications, as you can see down below, is it does require over 100 uh, priority mail pieces per week to be shipped. And then the Visible, which is the company we've teamed up with to offer the USPS module, uh, they do need to do an analysis of your shipping. Uh, but any questions on that, please feel free to reach out and we can get that set up. Because like I said, some, some clients are starting to notice it and keep track and they are saving up to 65% over, you know, using uh, FedEx or UPS. Okay. So with all that being said, let me uh, jump into the demo. Let me just X out of here and then jump on my demo machine. So on my demo machine, this is the Starship uh, client software. Uh, this is kind of our original software, uh, just to let everyone know, and I might be able to show it at the end if we have some time, but we are rolling out a new user, a web UI user interface. So instead of this client, it's more of a website look and feel. Uh, everything's gonna be laid out right in front of your shipper. And again, if we have some time, I'll jump in, process a shipment, or at least show you that. Uh, but just something that you can look forward to. Uh, but with the Starship client or the web, new web UI, one of the nice features is, is as a shipper, I can actually just work with inside Starship. 
So technically at my shipping station, I don't even need Sage installed. I don't even need access to Sage. Uh, we're really just automatically connected into the Sage database, kind of all those tables. And as you can see in the upper left hand side is our source document. So the source document we can pull by sales order, by customer, or even by invoice number. Uh, most clients it's gonna be by sales order number. Now, if the sales order number is barcoded, say on your pick sheet or whatever you're shipping against, you can use just a regular plug and play wedge type scanner and actually scan in that information. Of course, I can manually type it in. We also have this magnifying glass lookup. And as you can see here, we can get into applying filters. Let me just clear that filter. And from there, as you see, I can see all my orders. I can sort by any of these columns. I can also get into doing batch processing. So I can select as many orders as I like. I can click process selected. And then I can also just click the OK button. And what's going to happen is Starship's just automatically going to start generating all the shipping documents for all the orders that I've selected. So it uh, might not work for everyone because uh, you have to think, you know, definitely going to have to have weight set up either inside of Sage or inside of Starship. Not going to be able to back order any items. Um, really can't move items into different boxes. So best scenario, we have clients, hey, Black Friday, we had a special on this one item. Now we have a thousand orders. They have to ship complete one item, one box. The weights are all set up. So that's when they'll use the batch processing. So here, I'll just grab this one, one order. And really Starship's just data mapping fields from Sage. Uh, these data map fields can have a one-to-many relationship. So as you can see, based off the ship via, Starship's automatically gonna select the carrier, the service, the billing and account information. So if anyone's doing third party or collect shipments, the system can be set up that it automatically changes it to third party and then automatically brings in the customer's account info. Okay. Name of the game with Starship is to help streamline your shipping process. So less things as a shipper that I have to manually click, click on or select or type in, the better. And that's the same with any of the shipment options. Uh, we can look at, say, user defined fields to automatically trigger them. We can even set them up as default. So here, in this case, I'm using UPS's quantum view or the carrier generated email. I always have it selected. I always am pulling in an email address from here. It's just coming in from the sales order record. And I have my system set up that UPS will send the customer or send to this email address an email if there was a delay in the shipment. And I'll explain why and towards the end of the demo, why my system's set up that way. Okay. Sender, that's the company uh, that we're pulling this order from inside of Sage. Out of the box, Starship does support multiple companies as well as warehouses and or locations. And then down below the recipient that is the ship to from the sales order. So Starship will also do address validation. We do validate zip plus four, and we also validate the commercial residential flag. So gonna help save on address correction fees, and of course that commercial residential correction fee. Now, up top, I really kind of consider that all the order header information. Uh, down below in the packaging view, that's where we get into that item to box detail. So really those line items from your order are gonna come in. Uh, I have a couple things going on on my system set up. The first one is a packaging scenario. So Starship can automatically learn your packaging scenarios or they can manually be set up. But in this case, Starship knows, hey, every time this blanket is shipped, I know they put it in a blanket box so it's automatically packaged it for my shipper. Okay. Packaging scenarios, currently just one item, one box, so we can't do multiple items into the same type of box, but it's great if anyone's doing case packs or have one item that always goes into multiple boxes uh, because packaging scenarios can be defined by quantity. So I can even say, okay, blanket box only holds six blankets. If the order was for 12, Starship would know, all right, I need two blanket boxes with six blankets in each box. Okay. And then the same thing, best example I always use for multiple packages is like if we're shipping a chair and maybe the back of the chair and the seat is in one box and the legs is in a different box, um, packaging scenario can most certainly do that. Bring in a chair and then have the two different boxes. Okay. Now, my system is also set up that if there is no packaging scenarios for the items that are being brought in, 
it just drops them into a default box, which I have as a custom box. Your system could be set up that these come in as loose items. And then as a shipper, I have to at least put those loose items for a parcel shipment in at least one type of packaging. Okay, LTL shipment, of course, we can leave them loose. Um, but here, uh, really, if I needed to add an additional box, you know, maybe I needed three boxes, I can use the plus icon. Or if this was a large order, maybe I have an order, it's got 100 line items on it, I need 10 boxes, I can simply say, repeat the current package X number of times, click OK, and then Starship would just automatically drop all those boxes. So again, I need 10, I could tell it I need 10 boxes, and the 10 boxes would be listed. Now, the item to box detail is not required. So if I have an empty box, as long as I have a weight, I will be able to ship this. Uh, but if I wanted to do item to box detail, you know, maybe uh, I know this wool sweater can also fit in that blanket box. It's simple, drag and drop, okay? I can hold down the shift key to grab multiple items. I can also hold down the control key if I wanted to split quantities. So, hey, I need two in one box, and then the remaining two stay in, say, this custom box. Right. Now, speaking of the, the boxes here, I have highlighted the blanket box. This is just part of Starship's database where we allow you to set up your own custom packaging type. Now, that could be bags, bales, boxes, pallets, what have you. As you can see, we also link into, say, in this case, because it's UPS, I can see their standard packaging. Uh, but the nice thing with using a package is as underneath, as you see, the dimensions will automatically populate for your shipper. Right? Uh, with Starship here is actual versus bill weight. So actual, that could come from a scale. I can manually type that in. My system, I'm actually just pulling weights from inside of Sage. So here, streamlining my shipping process, I don't even have to weigh this or type in a weight. Starship knows, just based off of what's in uh, the inventory file, what to bring in for a weight. Now, next door, as you see, I have 11, but this is saying 19. So this is the actual dimensional weight. As I mentioned, dim weights nowadays with UPS, FedEx, as well as USPS is a big deal. So we will actually send this out at the correct dimensional weight. So you're not going to get hit with those correction fees or you know uh, freight changes because later on UPS said, oh, you know, you sent that out at 11 pounds, it's actually dimensionally 19. So live connection again, that's what we're gonna send that out at the 19 pounds in this case. All right. Now I'm just click on a line item detail. So again, my system, I mapping in item number, description, value, weights. Now Starship also has a database where it's gonna start storing your inventory items. The reason we do this because inside of Sage there's really not a spot for say NMFC codes, freight class. In this case, this being an international shipment. Here we can store all the required international data. Now I know starting, I think it's Sage 2017, they added a harmonizer schedule B code field. So if you're using that, we can most certainly link this field to that field. Or if any of this information is living in say a user defined field, same thing, we can change the mappings and have Starship automatically pull it in from, say, a user-defined field. But again, Starship can store all that information for you. The schedule be our harmonized code. We actually have a lookup. So if I was missing it, as a shipper, I could simply come in here. And as you see, I could look up by description or maybe partial code. Okay. Of course, any of this information, once I fill it out, click OK, ship in process, Starship will automatically save it for next time. Units on shipment, this is where I can back order items. Uh, of course, anything that I back order inside a Starship, Starship will automatically back order inside a Sage. So what you're gonna see, once I ship and process this, Starship is automatically gonna create the invoice inside of Sage. So also gonna help streamline the uh, front office's job. You know, we're already gonna have those invoices created for them. Really what they'll need to do is just maybe go in and proof them, make sure they're okay and then you know, update them and send them out. So that's the packaging view. Uh, we also do have a shipping assistant wizard. Some of our clients find this easier to use. Uh, if so, this screen can automatically pop up instead of going right down to the packaging view. But from here, I can get into features like consolidating multiple orders into one shipment. So if I had any orders going to the same ship to, I would be able to see them down here 
And then again, I can consolidate them just into one shipment. After that, click next. This is where I can do units on shipments. Click next. We already packaged this, but I could have my items up top, boxes down below, simple drag and drop. And if this was an LTL shipment, because Starship is multi-carrier, multi-mode, so I'm going to be able to process all my different type of shipments right from inside of Starship, I would be able to click next one more time, and then it would have my boxes up top, pallets down below, so I can actually build my pallets. I'm just going to click finish here, bring me right back to the Starship screen, and usually next step is the rate shopping. So I'm just going to go to the rate shop tab. I can also click this green dollar icon. But as you can see here, all the carries that I have modules with, so in this case, FedEx, UPS, USPS, I'm going to be able to see my live negotiated rate. Maybe I just want to sort this by charges so I can see who's the least expensive. Okay. I can contract. I, if I wanted to, I can also see published list rates. Estimated delivery, I can also go by business days or total days if needed. And this whole rating process, that could also be automated. Starship, we allow you to set up ship via rules. So a lot of our clients also set those up and what they'll do is have a rule that says, you know what, Starship, you automatically rate shop my shipment and select the least expensive carrier and service, for example. Okay, so that process can be automated as well. Charges tab, simple breakdown of the charges. You do not have to click this to process a shipment. I just show it to talk about freight rules. So if anyone, uh, you know, maybe you do promo codes, free shipping over X amount of dollars, maybe certain customers receive a discount on freight. Uh, that's what freight rules are for. They can be percentages, min max, it could be a flat rate. And really those trigger fields, uh, here I have one, I'm looking at a user defined field. It's a simple checkbox. It lives on customer maintenance. It's called freight discount. And in this case, because it's selected for this customer, they are receiving a 10% discount. And then I think I have one more here. Oh, and these trigger fields also can go down to line item detail. So here is a rule that says, okay, because every time I ship this base, I have to use additional packaging material, I'm gonna add an additional $5 flat fee to cover that additional handling or packaging material. So a lot of flexibility with those rules, again, those trigger fields, all the way down to line item detail. Okay. But when we're ready to actually ship and process, can go up here, click the ship and process button, or the F5 key, which is the shortcut key. Uh, also can save shipments, so maybe we're staging one, want to start the process, save it, come back and finish it later. But once we click ship and process, Starship will automatically start printing out your shipping labels and documents. For the sake of the webinar, I actually just preview them. I also use this as what we call our smart label. And as you can see, the smart label will print a shipping label and packing list together. So this would go to a laser printer, but most certainly you can send your shipping labels to a thermal printer. Starship's packing list, if you'd like, that can also go to a thermal printer, or of course, you can just send it to a laser printer. Or if you wanted to, you can even save it to a network share folder. Um, so here's box one, box two. Uh, shipping documents can be customized. So as you see here, I added our logo. Uh, nowadays, we have a lot of clients that, hey, we do drop ships, blind shipments. We need to actually have the uh, vendor's logo on there. So our documents, you can customize them, unlimited templates. And then with each template, you can also assign printing rules. So again, maybe customer ABC needs a document to look a certain way. You can create a template for that customer set up the rule, and then Starship would only generate that document if it was for that certain customer. All right. Now, this is an international shipment, so Starship can generate international documents, uh, as well as, as, as I said, like if it's an LTL, we can do bill lading forms, pallet labels, carton labels, but order header, line item detail, automatically gonna populate, and this one I've customized, so it's signed and dated. So again, one less thing my shipper has to worry about stopping and filling out, and NAFTA form, again, standard information up top, automatically gonna populate, and then down below these kind of standard static fields, I actually have already generated due to a customization, okay? All right, so kind of drag that process out, but again, bring in our order, you know, item box detail for if it's required, rate shop, 
or have Starship automatically do it. Ship and process, receive my documents, and uh, now as a shipper, I just can move on to my next shipment. All right, so what I'll do is minimize Starship, and I'll open up Sage here, and we'll just jump back into Sage so I can show you the right back. So again, just going into SO invoice data entry, go to my last invoice. So here's sales order 222, the one we just shipped. So Starship's created this invoice. On the header tab, click on the tracking. Here's all my tracking, carrier, weight, freight, comment. That's up to you what you want to write back. But this is automatically being written back as soon as my shipper clicks ship and process. This is going into the Sage tables, the correct tables. So I can even use their little tracking hyperlink or again, item to box. I can see it was in each package. And also on the totals, we're gonna write back the freight amount. Uh, freight amount is plus or minus any freight rules. Or if there are some scenarios where you do not want Starship to write back the freight, we allow you to set up write back rules, okay? Now, the freight amount of field, this is the standard freight amount field inside of Sage. Underneath, you can see two additional fields. These are user-defined fields that I've created, so freight cost from Starship, as well as fuel surcharge. So another nice feature of Starship is we can take additional shipping information. In this case, I'm taking my cost, so what UPS is gonna charge me, and writing it into this user-defined field. So um, any of the user-defined fields we don't set up, uh, of course, you can talk to your team at DWD, um, and they can most certainly set these up for you, but as you see, we can take additional information, send that back. So now when someone in the front office actually goes to update this invoice, they can look and say, oh, wait a minute, we shorted ourselves on this one. What happened? Uh, the customer received a discount. Nope, they shouldn't have. You know, it should be $435, okay? So you can still always manually overwrite that freight amount field. And then fuel surcharge, I was just working with a client, uh, their LTL shipment, they wanted actually to be able to pull out the fuel surcharge because for certain customers, they actually did a, a charge, the freight charge was based off of the fuel surcharge. So um, just some, again, some a little advanced options you can get into doing. So that's that whole shipping process and the right back to Sage. Uh, real quick, I'll just jump into some of the add-on, and I shouldn't even say add-on, included features with Starship. So first one is our e-notify program. And let me just log back in here. So what I'm gonna show you, e-notify dashboard and even rate shop from sales order entry, again, are included with Starship, no additional fees. They do not require any additional seats or licenses and can be installed on as many workstations as you'd like. So with e-notify, this is again why I have my system set up to use a carrier generated email if there was a delay because through e-notify we're going to allow you to create your own custom email template so put your company logo on there build your brand awareness uh, very easy to create you can pull in sage fields like po number sales order number maybe even let the customer know how it's being shipped where it's going to packages estimated delivery that's coming from the carrier so that is accurate and then if we're doing item to box detail, we can show them what's in each package. Hyperlink tracking number. So you can send these to your customers, let them track, and hopefully reduce those inbound calls or inquiries regarding, hey, where's my shipment? Did it ship? Um, customer will get this and let them track it. Uh, just like the printing documents, unlimited templates for the emails. And you can also get into doing emailing rules. So here I have a 20% off promo code which you can hyperlink, get the customer right back to your website. But nice thing with those email templates and the emailing rules, maybe I only wanna send this promo to certain customers so I can set up that rule and then Starship would only send it to those customers. Right. Dashboard, this is our reporting tool. So again, this can be installed as many workstations. Most clients, everyone in the front office has dashboard. Uh, now, as I mentioned, all the tracking information that's gonna get written back into Sage so if I needed to track, I could do that through Sage, but of course I can do it from dashboard and I can go to tools. I can use our find shipment. You know, maybe I don't have a tracking number. Maybe I, you know, invoice number. Maybe I only have a PO number. But as you can see, all that information I can uh, sort by or search by, or I can even just come in here and I have some of our widgets, performance indicators up here. 
So maybe I want shipment by status, and maybe I just want to drill down. Oh, yep, there's all my shipments, and yeah, let me track this one. It's the one I'm looking for. But either way I track, I'm going to gain access to this record, shipment record detail. And as you can see from here, I'm going to be able to see ship date, estimated status, and if it was in transit, the number of days. Again, packages used, line item, breakdown of the charges, if there was any shipment options. All the way down to proof of delivery, if the carrier supports it and it was required, you can even see the signature. So again, these are just some of the performance indicators. Um, CAN reports, oops, let me go to reports. Of course, we have our daily, our history, um, shipment reports. Uh, two I make mention, these are ones clients run all the time. The first one, our late delivery report. I can run that, it's gonna guarantee, or compare the guaranteed delivery date to the actual delivery date let me know of any shipment that wasn't delivered on time so I can contact the carrier and try to get a refund. And then we have a applied versus contract. So I can show I showed you how you could do this inside of Sage with the user defined field in the custom write back. But we do have it as a canned report. And this report's going to show you all your shipments. It's going to show you the applied. So again, that's what you charge the customer. The second column is going to be your contract or what the carrier is going to charge you. And then the third column would be the plus or minus. So quick report you can run, make sure you're not losing money on your shipments. Okay. All right, and real quick, what I'll do is uh, I'll just quickly, just so you can show, uh, see, again, I mentioned multi-carry, multi-mode. So this is really Starship in freight mode. Again, same look and feel, but now I have item box, box to pallet detail. So I can get into, you know, building my pallets, again, here my system, I have items as loose items. Being an LTL shipment, I can leave them as loose. Uh, and again, same look, feel, I can rate shop. I can reach up all the different carriers. You know, maybe have a rule set up. Starship would automatically select the least expensive one. Um, here, again, tendering. This normally would be electronic, so it automatically would send the information to the carrier. Uh, this just being a demo account, I don't have that option. So I'm just gonna manually type in the pro number, but of course, most of the carriers support that, that they're electronically going to return that pro number. And when I'm ready, again, shipping process in here, because it's LTL, I'm going to get my freight document. So here's a pallet label, barcoded bill of lading, pro number. And then here's Starship straight bill of lading form. We, all, we also support a VIC, but same like the commercial invoices and the NAFTA forms order header, line item detail, automatically populating, and then I have it customized so all the standard fields down below are already being processed. And again, ship and process. As a shipper, I move on to the next shipment and back inside of Sage, it's regardless if it's parcel or LTL, it's gonna do that same right back. So 227, there's my tracking numbers, even though I manually type them in for the demo. And I can see item to box detail as well. And totals, again, writing back freight, plus or minus freight rules. My freight charge, that's gonna come from the carrier, so my live negotiated rate. And then here's that fuel surcharge as a third option. Okay. All right, so again, that's really the process through Starship. I'll bring open sales order entry. And here's that rate quote button that would be added into sales order entry. I can as a customer service rep, oops, it's timed out on me, so let me oops, log into here and click log on. Uh, so really the nice feature, as you're gonna see, we're gonna take all that information from the sales order, automatically bring it into this screen. Uh, we do have this available as a standalone, but of course, if we use it as a standalone, it's not automatically gonna populate any of this information. But just like inside of Starship, down below is all my different carriers. And then I can see list, contract, and applied. Uh, any of these columns you can remove. So if you don't want your customer service reps to see your con contract rate, it doesn't have to be there. And again, applied is plus or minus any freight rules. So customer service reps can take that into consideration. And under the packaging, I know a lot of times customer service, they might not know how the package is gonna go out. But here, if I have packaging scenarios set up, they'd be able to see them. Uh, maybe they know this remaining item. Uh, I know we that we have a large box, or you know, in this case, maybe it goes into a, you know, let's put it in a lamp box. 
So as you see, this links into Starship's packaging database. From there, the dimensions would populate. Uh, but really, any of these fields, you know, maybe I don't have the weight set up inside of Sage, I can manually type that in. If this was a custom box, I could also manually type in the dimensions. And then down below, I could rate or rate shop. Probably going to just want to do rate shop if you're using multiple carriers. Uh, rate, what that's going to do is just rate the carrier up above that's been selected based off the ship via. Rate shop is where you'll see all the carriers that you have modules with through Starship. Okay. Um, also from here, you can do address validation. Maybe we want to do that ahead of time. And really, any changes I make on this screen, so maybe the address gets changed due to validation, maybe I decide to go with a different carrier and service, uh, once I click Apply, Starship would automatically write that back on the sales order. So it's going to reverse translate that. Okay. Um, I think we have some time here, so let me cancel this. And like I said, I'll show you that new web UI that's getting ready to be rolled out. Uh, let me just close the client because you can still use the client and the web UI just can't have them running on the same machine at the same time and let me log in here and hopefully it's going to work for me uh, but as you can see it's just really just a web UI look and feel so instead of that client look and feel yeah fingers crossed yep yeah, here we go and now this should bring me in and I'll have my options. So again, I can pull by sales order, by shipment, or by invoice. So up top here, I can kind of click through which ones I want to do. Uh, here's all, again, all my looks. I can also add filters if needed. And let's see, let's see if we have a order we can pull in here. Let me grab one of these. No, I'll grab this one. So I can either, you know, still do that batch processing. I can manually select an order, click create shipment, or I can even just scroll over here and click the little truck icon. But same functionality, again, just a different look and feel. So here's all my source, sender, recipient, ship via, you know, transportation, status. Now here's my packaging. So instead of that packaging down below, it's right in front of me. And I can you know, drill further down into this to actually do my packaging. I can drill down into the line item detail to do packaging. Or just like I showed you in the other one, I could just switch to my packaging view. And then again, here what we'll do is we'll unpack this item. So now I have my t-shirt over here and I can simply just say, oh, I know that goes in a t-shirt box, automatically just package that. And from there I can click ship and process or I can go up to the shipment. And as you can see, we have some shortcut keys. I can save, ship and process, ship and create a return, or maybe just want to preview that email, but we'll just do ship and process in this case. And again, just going to receive my shipping documents. Normally just print right out here. They're just going to preview on some uh, web looking pages, but same right back and send back all that information into Sage. So should, these should pop up my shipment documents. There we go. So again, just that smart label for the sake of the demo where it's the shipping label and packing list. But again, even through the web UI, you would be able to just have these automatically print out to whatever printer you need them to go to. So again, just really different look and feel for you, uh, but you do have the option once this web UI comes out, you can use that old the client that I showed you or the new web UI interface. Okay, so I think that's really what I wanted to show everyone. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions or anyone. Uh, of course, there is the question pane um, where you can uh, well, actually, it looks like we do have a question. Uh, so when does the web UI come out? Um, it is out in controlled release, so we have some clients testing it. Uh, so really, uh, you know, if you're willing to do a control release, it's pretty much ready for that. Um, it, it's been in control release for a while. So honestly, I mean, it is pretty much ready to go. Um, you know, but again, we, we are just control releasing it. So it, it is available to use for the web UI. So there's another question here. Let me just uh, drag this out so I can read these. Full screen.
screen. Oh, come on. Bear with me one second. There we go. Okay. Let me just make this full size so I can see it. Okay, so there's a question about uh, if I can speak more on to the field that Sage uh, feeds into Starship um, and really in sales order entry. So and let me go back into sales order entry. And we'll just bring up a sales order here. So again, just standard out of the box, uh, of course, we're going to look at the customer field, the ship via, that's what's translating the carrier service billing type inside a Starship, uh, the ship to. Okay, that's where all that information's coming from. But as you can see down below here, if you have user-defined fields, um, for example, if anyone's doing sh uh, shipments for Walmart, and I don't know if anyone's familiar, but they have some specific information that needs to go on their own bill lading form, which we actually have as a standard form. So what a lot of clients will do, again, using user-defined fields, is set this up where here's consignee, department number, destination, and serial number, or seal number, I should say, are some of those required. And I think a ship date is also required. Um, but again, it's really up to you where you want Starship. That's a, one of the nice things with those data mapping fields is that we can say, okay, Starship, you know, look at this user defined field. If you see information, automatically bring it into Starship or if it's not there, and it can also live in Starship's database, okay, if you don't see anything, check your own database. Um, but again, basically standard fields that default, of course, customer information, ship to information, ship via, uh, if you did you know, have a freight amount here already, we could you know, bring that in, um, and then, you know, like I said, not, maybe not do the rate shopping, or maybe rate shop, and maybe we get a better deal with a different carrier. Um, and then we can do the right back or not do the right back on the invoice with that freight amount. Okay, so as you can see, I have kind of some standard, or I should say staggered user-defined fields like freight rules, um, label to print, you know, all the different clients' requirements. I have worked with them to kind of do advanced features. But, um, you know, again, with sales order, it could be sales order header. Uh, even line item detail, we can look at, change those mappings. Again, customer maintenance. Um, really, a lot of the Sage fields or tables we can actually look at and point Starship to. Okay. And then even inside Starship, we allow you to set up user-defined fields. So maybe there was some other field you wanted us to bring in. Uh, we could actually map those in, use a Starship user-defined field, and of course, from there, once it's in Starship, that could be added to shipping documents into that email template uh, that I mentioned. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know if I see any other questions. Let me look. Uh, let's see. Okay. Actually, oh, yeah. Actually, I had see one um, about the implementation. Uh, so with Starship, really, um, the install, if we're doing installation, uh, usually within two weeks, we can get you scheduled, and it usually takes about four to six hours. And then, of course, there's training, um, but it's a very uh, pretty seamless in in install, um, but our, our process is always going to have uh, send out a pre-install checklist so we can make sure all your system requirements um, match starships and then once we receive that back we'll actually in schedule a pre-install call where we go over that checklist again just to make sure when we go in to do the install uh, we don't run into any roadblocks um, okay and yeah it looks like uh, those are the questions so uh, again really appreciate everyone uh, taking time for the webinar uh, and I really appreciate everyone at DWD for putting this on. And uh, if you need anything further, please feel free to reach out to DWD and they can most certainly get in contact with me. Absolutely, and thank you very much for your presentation there. Um, okay. no, if there are, are, yeah, if there are no, are no other questions, um, everybody in attendance and not in attendance, if anybody registered will get a an email that will have a link that this webinar is recorded. So if you want to view it again, you can do that. Um, and I believe uh, the contact information I was at the beginning, but I can 
uh, give that again. My email here is jthrasher at dwdtechgroup.com. If anybody has any questions, comments, further questions, and uh, we can relay those to V Technologies as well. So yeah. if yeah. there's nothing yeah. else, then uh, Matt, thank you very much again. And thank you everybody for attending and have a wonderful rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Thanks again, everyone.